Need a new playmat? Playing with Power MTG now has merchandise. Go to playwithpowermtg.com to order playmats and t-shirts with more merch on the way. All sales help us grow the channel. You can also support us by purchasing on TCG Player through our affiliate links in the description. We love TCG Player because it gives the best prices online and still supports local game stores. Finally, you can support us directly through Patreon. You'll get access to our community, early access to videos, and even exclusive videos not available anywhere else. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power in TG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Happy April Fools, everyone! On May 15, 2019, we recorded a gameplay video. War of the Spark had just released, and Urza, Lord High Artificer, was spoiled. So Ryan, Folger, Adam, and Garrett all sat down for a video. This game resulted in the worst game of magic we have ever played. We considered scrapping the video, but instead we sat on it. So, for the last 11 months, we looked for an opportunity to show this video to the world. Now, with April Fools, we knew this would be the best opportunity to do that. So, laugh at our pain and revel in the fact that we are all terrible Magic players. We wanted to let everyone know that we have started a CEDH webcam league on our Patreon Discord server. The league runs until the end of May and there are prizes. All patrons at all levels are qualified to play in the league. We've had a fantastic time so far in our league and we have seen some really fun games already. Since we are all currently stuck inside for the time being, might as well get some awesome games of CEDH. Please consider becoming a patron and joining us in the league. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan piloting Urza, Lord High Artificer. This build was from the first two weeks when Urza was spoiled, so it definitely wasn't where Urza is now, but it is still an interesting build nonetheless. Ryan's opening hand contains a Flooded Strand, Jeweled Amulet, Trinket Mage, Grafdigger's Cage, Snapcaster Mage, and two islands. Next, we have Folger piloting Anala, Archmage Ritualist. This build for the time was still leaning heavily on the Wanderwine Prophets combo, and uses that plus Anala's Eminence ability to go for infinite turns. Folger's opening hand contains a Fairy Macabre, Chrome Mox, Counterspell, Dance of the Dead, Cast Dissident Mage, Mana Crypt, and an Island. After that, we have Adam piloting Cast Dissident Mage. This version of Cast is a consultation build that seeks to win with Laboratory Maniac. Adam's opening hand contains a Yawgmoth's Will, Time Twister, Delay, Spell Pierce, Exotic Orchard, and Averdant Catacombs. Finally, we have Garrett piloting Tassiger the Golden Fang. This version of Tasker uses Seasons Past, Tutors, and Infinite Mana to cast your entire deck and win with one of its win cons. Garrett's opening hand contains an Abrupt Decay, Dark Confidant, Regrowth, Ashiok Dream Render, Soul Ring, Windswept Heath, and an Urbor, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Without further ado, let's kick off this amusing arrangement of animated artistic abandon. Folger wins the Kylie Jenner Lip Challenge and gets to start us off. Folger plays an island for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He follows up with a Chrome Mox, exiling Fairy Macabre. Folger passes the turn. Adam plays a Verdant Catacombs for turn and passes. Garrett plays a Windswept Teeth for turn and also passes. Ryan plays an Island for turn. He casts a Jeweled Amulet. He follows up with a Graft Digger's Cage. This is about the best card you could have in this pond. And Garrett responds by cracking his Windswept Teeth for an Underground Sea. That is, until Adam lets him know he cannot fetch an Underground Sea with Windswept Teeth, so Garrett instead fetches up a Breeding Pool and to play Tapped. All through, Ryan passes. During its upkeep, Folger loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts his Commander, Inala, Archmage Ritualist. He passes. At the end of Folger's turn, Adam cracks his Verdant Catacombs for a Watery Grave into play Tapped. Adam plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn and passes. Garrett plays an Urbor, Tomb of Yawgmoth for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows up with a Dark Confidant and gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays an Island for turn and passes. Folger, on his turn, with his strategy getting massively affected by the Grafdigger's Cage, decides to cast Dark Petition without Spell Mastery, which feels pretty bad. He searches up a card into his hand. He attacks Ryan with Anala. Ryan takes the hit and Folger passes the turn. At the end of Folger's turn, Adam cracks his Bloodstained Mire for a Steam Vents into play tapped. Adam plays a Wooded Foothills for turn and passes. During its upkeep, Garrett reveals an Ancient Tomb through his Dark Confidant. He plays his Ancient Tomb. 
He taps his Ancient Tomb for Black through Urborg and casts Ashiok, Dream Render. He activates Ashiok, milling himself for four, and exiling his opponent's graveyards. He casts a Copy Artifact. Copy resolves and he has it enter as a copy of Grafdigger's Cage. All through, Garrett passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan puts a counter on his Jeweled Amulet. Ryan plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He casts Static Orb. In response, Adam, not wanting the game to be shut down, casts Spell Pierce, countering the Static Orb. Finished up, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Adam cracks his Wooded Foothills. And this is when everyone reminds him that Ashiok is out and that he can't search. Since Ashiok was new at the time, we all cut Adam a little slack and let him take it back. With everyone chuckling a little, the turn passes to Folger. During his upkeep, Folger loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. Folger, still laughing about the misplay from Adam, casts a Spellseeker. Spellseeker resolves, and Folger pays 1 through Anala's Eminence trigger to make a token copy. The ability resolves, Folger goes to search, but that's when everyone reminds him of the Ashiok that's still on the battlefield. Folger, super bitter about getting caught by Ashiok as well, attacks Ashiok with his token Spellseeker and Anala. Garrett blocks Anala with his Dark Confidant, definitely realizing the value of this card. All through, Folger reluctantly passes. Adam plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He passes. Garrett starts off his turn by delving four and casting his commander, Tassiger, the Golden Fang. He casts a Birds of Paradise. He activates Ashiok, milling Folger for four, which includes Dak Faden, Jinja Taxus, Liliana of the Veil, vale, and a Snapcaster Mage. Then Garrett's opponents exile their graveyards. Garrett passes the turn. Ryan casts a Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Folger loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He attacks Ashiok with Anala. Garrett blocks it with Tassiger. In his second main phase, he casts Kess, Dissonant Mage. He ships the turn to Adam. Adam plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn and passes. Garrett starts off his turn by casting Necropotence. Ryan responds by casting Swan Song, countering the spell and giving Garrett a 2-2 bird. Garrett casts Regrowth. Ryan misses his Mystic Remora trigger, but Folger is there to remind him it exists. Ryan draws a card, Regrowth resolves, and Garrett returns Seedborn Muse to his hand. He activates Ashiok, milling himself for four, and exiling everyone else's graveyard. Garrett passes. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays an island for turn. He casts Trinosphere. Folger responds by casting Spell Pierce, countering the spell. With his second Stax piece countered, Ryan passes. Folger, determined to be rid of it, attacks Ashiok with everything he's got. Garrett blocks, and Ashiok finally dies. Folger passes the turn. At the end of Folger's turn, and seizing the opportunity, Adam cracks his wooded foothills for a volcanic island. On his turn, Adam casts a Demir Signet. He follows up with a Time Twister. In response, Folger casts Reality Shift, targeting Tassiger. Tassiger is exiled, and Garrett manifests atop of his library. Folger also cracks his Misty Rainforest for a Steam Vents and to play untapped, paying two life. With no other actions, Time Twister resolves. Everyone shuffles hands and graveyards into library and draws a fresh seven. Next, Adam casts Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back on top. He plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He looks very carefully at the board state before he decides to crack his Flooded Strand for an Underground Sea. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows up with a Felwar Stone. All through, Adam gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett plays an Underground Sea for turn. He casts Ashiok, Dream Render. Everyone erupts that they still have to deal with this card and they all make a pact to make sure to cut Garrett's deck next time and Ashiok resolves. Garrett then casts Windfall. Ryan, not wanting his amazing new hand to go away, casts Pact of Negation, countering Windfall. Garrett activates Ashiok, targeting Folger again. He mills four, including an animate dead, and they exile their graveyards. Garrett passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Pact of Negation trigger. Also in his upkeep, he lets his Mystic Remora die. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. He moves to his end step and discards down to hand size. Folger plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He casts By Force, where X equals 4, destroying both Draft Digger's Cages and both Soul Rings. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. He attacks Ashiok with both of his creatures. Garrett blocks both of them. All through, Folger passes. At the end of Folger's turn, Adam casts Mystical Tutor. Mystical Tutor resolves and everyone reminds him again that Ashiok is out and he cannot search his library. Sighing deeply, he moves to his turn. Adam plays an island for turn. 
He casts a Talisman of Dominance. He casts his Commander, Kess, Dissident Mage. Adam passes. Garrett plays an Island for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Mnemonic Betrayal. Mnemonic resolves and everyone's graveyards are exiled. Garrett casts Ryan's Soul Ring. Garrett then casts Ryan's Graft Digger's Cage. Garrett casts Adam's Mystical Tutor. He looks through his library and fetches up a Yogg Moss Will onto the top of his library. And this is when everyone reminds him that Graft Digger's Cage is out and his Yogg Will doesn't really work. He activates Ashiok, milling himself for four and milling away his Mystical Tutor target. He delves six, including his Yogg Will, and casts his commander, Tassiger, for the second time. He moves to his instep and everyone's cards return to their graveyards. On his turn, Ryan casts a Codex Shredder. He pays two life to cast a Phyrexian Metamorph. Metamorph resolves, and Ryan has it enter as a copy of Sol Ring. He casts his commander, Urza, Lord High Artificer. Urza resolves, and Ryan creates a construct. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Folger spends the top. Folger plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it for a nothing because of Ashiok. Folger then decides to cast Jace, the Mind Sculptor. He activates Jace, bouncing Garrett's Tassiger. He attacks Ashiok with his creatures, killing it. Folger follows up by casting by force from his graveyard, targeting Grafdigger's Cage, Codex Shredder, and then realizes he can't do it because Grafdigger's Cage is out. Furious with himself, he casts Windfall. Ryan responds by casting Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Force of Will onto the top of his library. He activates Sensei's top, drawing a card and putting top on top. He casts Force of Will, exiling a blue card and paying one life. Windfall is countered, and Folger steps away to go scream into a pillow, passing the turn. Adam plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it for a snow-covered island. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He attacks Jace with Cass, killing it. Adam passes. During his upkeep, Garrett casts Limdul's Vault. He looks at the top five, doesn't like what he sees, and pays one life to do it again. He keeps his second five, shuffles, and rearranges. In his main phase, Garrett taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Paradox Engine. Now, before you all go into the comments and start saying how Paradox Engine is banned, please remember that this video was recorded before the Paradox ban. Rest in peace, Paradox Engine. Rest in peace. In response to Paradox Engine, Folger flips his top, drawing a card, and hoping to find an answer. He does not, and Paradox Engine resolves. Garrett casts Assassin's Trophy, targeting Urza. Ryan taps his Construct for blue in response, Assassin's Trophy resolves, Urza dies, Ryan fetches up an island, and Garrett untaps through Paradox. Garrett delves away part of his graveyard to cast Tasker, triggering Paradox and untapping his non-land permanence. He activates Tasker, milling, and choosing Folger. Folger elects to give Garrett Seedborn Muse. Garrett plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He cracks it for Forest and gives the turn to Ryan. During Ryan's untap step, Folger reminds Ryan that he could have milled away either Adam's top deck or Garrett's limb dual stack. Ryan laments and moves to draw. In his main phase, Ryan casts Whir of Invention, improvising two. It resolves and he fetches up an Isochron Scepter onto the battlefield. He imprints Dramatic Reversal. He demonstrates the loop of casting Dramatic Reversal, untapping his permanents over and over, and milling everyone with his Kodak Shredder. To ensure no other tricks can be done with Garrett, Ryan casts Reality Shift on Garrett's Tasker, exiling it. With nothing else, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Folger begins to look through his graveyard to see if there's anything he can do to stay in this game and not lose. After searching for a bit and seeing if there's any way out, he sees the Graft Digger's Cage on the board, realizes he cannot cast anything from his graveyard, and he and the others lose the game. Ladies and gentlemen, that game was off the wall. We've waited nearly a year to show this game to everyone. But why would we do that? Why would we want to show how bad we played? We wanted to show a couple of things. First, no one is perfect and this game is complicated. So the next time you make a mistake, please don't beat yourself up about it. We all make mistakes. Second, it's just a game. We're here to have fun. We do our best to try to not take ourselves too seriously and games like this are excellent reminders of that. Blunder after blunder, we still shuffle up and have a good time with each other. That's what we are all in this for. A quick congrats to every player in this game who stuck it out for the duration of that holy mess. Even with all the misplays, we still had quite a lot of laughs. April Fools is about laughs, and we wanted to have a good laugh with each other and at ourselves in this match. The most valuable card goes to Ashiok. 
Static abilities on Planeswalkers was new at the time, and obviously we were still having trouble keeping track. This card is an absolute nightmare and still sees play to this day. We wanted to ask you, what was your worst misplay in a game of CDH? There's always one we remember, and we would love it if you would share it with us in the comments below and all have a good laugh together. That about wraps it up for our April Fool's Day special. Thank you so much for watching, happy April Fool's Day, and we will see you next time.